I mean this nicely. Why do you think this is one of the most interesting times? We have like deglobalization like never before, income inequality like never before, worse healthcare systems like never before, climate change like never before. I'm looking at the world quite scared, if I'm totally honest, Toby. Yeah, but I, I think this is, I, I think because um, this is the, the overlay narrative of the media. Again, if you, if you, if you go at this from truth, um, I, I, I am like, I'm, 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 I'm quite concerned about climate change, but I'm also 100% like, I, we know how to solve it. It's a, tech, it's a technology problem. Um, wealth inequality is like, this is the most wealthy uh, society has ever been. You, you can't compare the existence of uh, any king to uh, your baseline experience of anyone in a Western society. Uh, it, it just, it just it, like, you, you don't even need to go to like incredible, like, like, like potential for healthcare and all these kind of things. Like, no one until they recently had ever had a warm shower. Like it's it's like, it's like these, these are unbelievable luxuries we we, we have. You just we just have a built-in hedonistic treadmill which makes us forget about it all. If if if, if you don't have to take my word for it, you you go for something like uh, Stephen Pinker's book Path to Enlightenment, or I think, and it, it just it just it just like drops like every single stat you have seen quoted as going worse and shows you it actually gets it's get, getting better. Um, I'm extremely optimistic. This is like it, it's um, there, there is a effect in the world which is um, which kind of sucks, but it's going to be temporary. Um, and it's the um, I'm doing fine, but everyone else is fucked effect. Yeah. And it's actually being measured in all like, in all societies. And it's like the US isn't even the worst, but like I don't have the numbers on top of my, uh, my 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 fingertips. But I think to remember, and if it's not true in the US uh, at this level, it's it's worse in South Korea and other places. But it's um, 80 to 90% of people will say, I'm doing fine, but everyone else is doing really, really poorly or, or like, like like around me. Um, so 90% of people say it's, it's fine and they think a vast majority of people are not. And everyone thinks this because we are actually I mean, there's real problems in the world, absolutely. And wealth inequality is the thing that could be even better. Like it's it's it's, it's too high in some places. Um, um, but it's also like a bad faith take that wealth inequality is a bad thing by itself. Like different do, people. Do you, do you think that's? I'm sorry. I'm I'm being just. I'm. I don't. I don't agree. Like I think I, people vote for Trump. I think people vote for Brexit because it's not that they're doing okay and everyone else isn't. It's because they're pissed off with what's happening. This, and they, they're not okay. And I think if you go to the 98%, or that's probably a gross exaggeration, but 90% of people in the UK, I don't know, 85 in the US or 90% in the US, who actually are living in real, not great quality standards and worsening standards, they're not happy with how they are and they don't think they're even okay. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I mean? Is it a luxury yep. of ours? Yeah, no, it's true. I, I, I like. Pe people, are, people want things to change and there are real problems in the world and people want to see things improve, which is um, really, really important for society. Um, people will vote for how they think things can be improved. We have disagreements, but even the largest disagreements like Brexit, Trump, yes, there are disagreements even in the goals, but they are very minor. Like everyone like agrees that like, hey, we, we want to live in, um, uh, like voting is a good thing. <laughs> everyone who votes thinks voting is presumably a good thing. Um, uh, like uh, the, the sort of system of, uh, uh, democracy. democracy that we have and 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 um enlightened self-interest harnessed towards the greater good um at least both components of capitalism are like important um uh, and have demonstrably been superior to everything else we've attempted before um uh people probably do agree that like completely unconstrained um uh pursuit of uh, uh wealth has negative externalities and would like uh, some changes. If you look at the poll data of what people want, they actually want to get to largely the same goals, uh, no matter which party they are at. They disagree on the on, on the approach there, but even there, they don't actually disagree as much. The political spectrum of po of positions you could hold is massive. Like absolutely, it's it, it goes all the way from uh, from 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 complete anarchy, like in communism, all the way to fascism, and and like that. The, the space is massive. We are arguing. In a, in a bracket which is around here. Now, the people who are on one side of it will think the people on the other side are the worst. <laughs> but, like, the spectrum could be so much larger here. here and, it, like, it's the old, like, 
Um, I against my brother, my brother and I against my cousin, my brother and my cousin against everyone else um, thinking. We do, uh, like people are somewhat tribal. We are in a infighting because we do not have the external attacks. Like it's, it's not like people are not really coming and saying, hey, let's go absolutely straight up to like Stalinist uh, uh, communism tomorrow. If they would, <laughs> all the political parties that we are voting for, uh, um, uh, and, and this is a credible threat coming from outside, would start figuring out how much they actually agree with each other. Anyway, um, I'm not the person to talk to about these kind of things. You have to talk to people like Tim Irvin or uh, Stephen Pinker um, about these things. I, I, what do I know? I, I, I built a company. Uh -huh. oh, so. Final one there. You said about the kind of the hedonistic treadmill that humans kind of face and are always on and like that continuous search for happiness. I, honestly, Toby, I face this too. If you told me, you know, I'd be here chatting to you years ago when I started from my bedroom, I'd think it was a joke. Uh, but I'm still not happy. I still want more. I, I want it bigger. I want to have more. It's never enough. When you think about that treadmill and, you know, looking across at the bigger boat, are you happy now? I think happiness is a temporary thing, but it's a, a terrible goal. Like, in fact, it's, it's, it's a goal that's sold to people to keep them miserable. But you want contentment, which is very different. Um, you, you, you want to be content. That's a, that's, that's a worthy goal. And it's actually much like if people would start making this differentiation, what we will figure out is like vastly more people currently live in a state of contentment um, than uh, at, at many other times in history. Now, the thing that can mess with contentment is, uh, is um, again, we are comparators. Like, um, no one wants the worst house on the street. So, um, and we just, the street, it became the entire world because of, you know, social media. This is by way, and, 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 and other things. Like, this has been affected. Like, um, one of the biggest effects of uh, the American Civil War was uh, urbanization because the soldiers, which were predominantly rural, uh, farm lived on farms, had to pass through the cities as they were being like, and um, after the civil, like before that, people just didn't travel more than like 50 kilometers away or even less, 20 kilometers was usual range of travel throughout your lifetime um, during those times. After people passed through cities, they're like, holy crap, this is so much better here. So people started moving to cities just because, like, because you want, you, you compare against what you know is possible. Um, and, and so, so we derive um, sometimes contentment um, from that, although that's a bug. Um, anyway, the, um, so happiness is bad because happiness is temporary. Like I'm happy that I'm like just like seeing a friend that I haven't seen in a long time. But like that's afterwards, I'm like content being able to like have fantastic conversations with my friend whenever I see him. So that's an important one. The hedonistic treadmill is, 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 a, is the engine of humanity. It's the thing that drives us to do everything that we actually value. Um, but it's it's a uh, it, it, it's the thing that causes us to strive for things to be discontent with status quo. The thing that set lets um, pioneers set out for, for 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 new shores. It's the thing that sets entrepreneurs out to start companies, um, um, academics to uh, descend into knowledge. Um, it, it, it's the thing we want, and as so often in life, the best thing about us is also the worst thing about us. And um, so so. It's a very, very, very bad idea to uh, make it your primary objective or derive your how you think about your current state from it. Like I, I can tell you, look, I, I, I've been extraordinarily lucky in so many different uh, uh, ways, amongst those materially, right? Like so, I, I it turns out like I, I would have done this no matter what, but like turns out uh, software products turned into companies can lead to more of the wealth generation than almost every other pursuit and better of outside of maybe real estate. And so, um, uh, like I partook in this for reasons of my own on a journey and, uh, I, uh, I, I, uh, sort of, um, true, like accidentally partook in massive, massive, um, uh, uh material wealth generation in, in, in this, of which a very small percent of a wealth that shop created came back to me, which is still a very large number. What does that do? Because people are like talk about this a lot. I think, I mean, it's cool. That's probably the best description. I can, um, one thing it allows me to do is like just sort of be surrounded by like beauty, I think is the best term. It's, it's, it's like um, I get to 
you know, live in a house that was carefully designed by someone it, like who presumably, I don't know who that was, but whoever built it, it was the best building that they could build given the whatever constraint they were under and really, really cared. Um, I, uh, you know, just like the, the things I, around me, like uh, the clothes I wear are made by entrepreneurs almost like, like actually my entire wardrobe comes from Shopify and uh, they made a decision that something else needed to exist and it was a great, great product. And um, I can, I can, I can purchase those independently of uh, how much people are asking for them because I try to, I can, I can buy them purely on agreeing with the story um, and so on. What does all that do? I would say it makes my days probably between two and 5% better. That's, that's it. I think that's a, that's, that's past a certain point, which most people clear uh, the average household income in North America is $60,000 a year. This is household income, right? Like, um, especially like the people who are listening to this are presumably in the tech industry or in finance. Most people, uh, like, um, clear this bar, um, uh, past that point, um, you can like get the kind of things that inspire you and around you and, and you increase the, you know, the quality or the happiness in the day or the delight you encounter with, with, with objects or maybe the conveniences by a couple percentage points. Is that worth it? Hell yes. Huge. Like 5%. That makes the days, that, that's, that's a huge lift on the baseline number. But like the baseline number is like, did I have like an interesting conversation with friends? Did I have, did I build something today? Did I, did I, did I, did I, did I talk with my children? Um, is everyone uh, healthy ar uh, around me? Those so are massively what, bigger inputs. What luxury makes you happy? It sounds like for me, it's um, Uber Luxes don't laugh, but like getting in a really nice car, like every time. It just makes me happier, more relaxed. And that's like the one thing that I would spend on and it changes my mood. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it's 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 these things. Like what what are the things that makes me happy? I, I just like I mean, I love a really, really, really good keyboard. I know it sounds not stupid, but like <laughs> I'm typing a lot. Like I I, it, I like I, I have hobby building mechanical keyboards. I, I, I like the soldering, I buy the components, I often engage in like some kind of group buy of some people who like someone designed something so let's help finance like it's just like this kind of stuff um you know having for all, for all children out there when you become a billionaire buy a keyboard <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i like like uh, honestly the biggest things like like a great chair a great keyboard a great monitor a great mattress like those things are incredible and they're not the things that are i coco chanel said this perfectly um uh, well, well, actually, that almost makes the opposite point, but it's still funny, so I'm going to share it because I set it up. Um, the um, the best things in life are free. The second best things are extremely expensive. 